Jutting south from Spain, at the western entrance to the Mediterranean, the Rock of Gibraltar rises nearly half a kilometre from the sea. Above ground, the apes rule the rock. Below, a dark labyrinth, 34 miles of tunnels, 166 chambers and caves. The most significant excavations took place during World War II. With Germany and its allies edging closer to European domination, Gibraltar became increasingly critical. But troops based on land would be an easy target. The obvious solution was to put them inside the rock. The civilian population was evacuated. Drilled and blasted with nitroglycerine, a garrison city was formed inside the lump of limestone. 16,500 men with enough food and ammunition for over a year in the event of siege. A hospital, bakery and laundry, telephone exchange and power station. But what lies inside today? What became of the garrison in the rock? Some parts have been completely transformed, others tenderly preserved. Some do just as they did decades ago, and some have been frozen in time. They call him El Tapo, the mole. Former gunner Peter Jackson will be our guide into the rock. Our first stop is St Michael's Cave. Today it's an underground concert venue, but there are many clues to its past. We're now in the main auditorium of St Michael's Cave. Now, St Michael's Cave has seen a lot of uses over the years. I mean, it was lived in by Neanderthal man. In the lead up to World War II, it was being used as a stores. As war approached, it, for a short while it became an ammunition magazine for the guns. But it's not good ammunition storage because it's very humid in here. So very quickly stores come out and it's used partially as a barracks for a while for soldiers to live in. So had 500 men living in the room outside and some within the cave. But as war looms and the civil population gets evacuated, this becomes an auxiliary hospital. So the steps you can see that move through the auditorium, if you imagine removing every second step, they were bed bays during World War II. Down in this area here, there's a huge concrete base, which is the floor of the operating theatre to the left. On this side is the amputations pit, and on the right is the body pit. You see a series of initials coming down, then it's got the unit. It's the second platoon of the second company of the 7th Regiment of Foot and it's in 1737. I'm not a fan of graffiti, believe it or not, in 34 years in the army, I never once left my name on the wall or the back of a toilet door or anything else. Uh, but when you see this and look at the date of it and you think, well, that's, that's, that is not graffiti, that's, that's proof that somebody from those units came here and, and left their mark. Gibraltar was never invaded in the war and the hospital was never really used. In recent months, a brand new sound and light installation has been opened to the public, creating mixed emotions. This is the rock being formed, so you see this. The rock being forced out of the water through cataclysmic upheaval to the angle we see when we look from the bay. The cave's being used uh, to tell a story for tourism. As a caver, I prefer the natural, but I can understand exactly why they're doing it. And if it, if it entertains and it brings in tourism, then it feeds the population. So of course it's quite right, they're doing something with it. We leave the bright lights of the old hospital behind and head to a part of the rock few eyes now see. Ooh. So what is this? This is a cocooned engine room. Originally a munition store in the 1800s, during the Second World War, it became a backup generator to power the guns on top of the rock. It's kind of spooky. It's awesome. Just be ready for the, in case of rats, because you do get the odd rat now and again. The war may have ended in 1945, but no one could be sure peace would last. The kit was put into what's known as heavy care and preservation, caked in thick grease and coated in tarpaulins, should the soldiers have to return to fight again. It's just left 
I mean, I don't know of many places in the world you can walk in and see this kind of equipment that's been left in heavy care and preservation from those days. I mean, it's, it's stunning. All portals are covered with like a hessian wrap that's coated in a heavy grease. So it's, it's made into like an airtight seal. So you can't get the rusting form and you'll see it on pipe ends uh, like this. The engines, they put in a, a cocoon. So they're wrapped in like a, a hessian or tarpaulin that is then coated in the grease and sealed. Pete believes places like this inside the rock should be seen by more. For now though, Fire Control South remains frozen in time and hidden from spectators. In part two of What's Inside the Rock. Three, two, one. We discover some unusual items hidden within. It's been here for about 100 years and I think that's worked. Outside of the actual rock there's not a lot of space and inside the rock there's a lot of vacant space at the moment. <laughs> Hannah King, Forces News in Gibraltar. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.